How's it going, everyone? This is Dr. Hefe playing more Disco Elysium, the final cut. And in the last episode, well, we had some exciting things happen. And if you don't want any spoilers, you should go and check it out yourself. We went and we confronted Ruby, and we saw what she had to say. We thought that she was possibly the murderer. She turned her death ray machine, I mean, I call it a death ray machine, but it's more of a Ulan machine. It was basically blasting radio frequencies into our brain. And, well, we could barely do anything, but try to have an interrogation with her while all sorts of random songs and numbers and sayings were flying through our brains. But at the end of it all, we knocked over her machine, confronted her, and she decided to shoot herself. We're actually holding her gun, so our gun is in the right hand. Her gun is in the left hand over here. You can actually see the two different guns very vaguely in the shadows. Maybe you'll be able to see it. But yeah, she turned the gun on herself. She's now dead. We read her journal. It seems like she thought that we are a peone, a agent of La Puta Madre, who's like the, the mob boss of the city. And us and Kim, we don't think that she's the killer. She didn't seem to be acting like one. If she was a killer, she probably should have used that machine on us a little bit more intensely trying to take us out but she didn't she had us like trapped in there with the gun on us and when we knocked the machine over she turned the gun on herself which is actually pretty sad it's pretty tequila. sad oh tequila sunset what a beautiful what a beautiful name but yeah now we don't really know who the murderer is we thought it may have been ruby kim thinks it may be another hardy boy i'm like, it seems like Clausia, Clark, Clausia, could have been the murderer. She did come up with the plan to hang Lely, but she really did seem like she was in love with Lely. She liked to party with him. She liked to get high and all sorts of drugs and have crazy sex with him. So I don't think it's her. Maybe someone was actually, like she thought, someone was gunning for her and hit Lely instead. Like, maybe there was just too many... Oh no. I remember last time we ran through this little area, what popped up. Stop. Just stop ahead. Danger. Oh? You are prepared. Don't put away your friend. Your weapon. Okay, hand-eye coordination. Great. The barrels of your Villiers 9mm pistol shine threateningly in the cold spring lights. I'll let Kim know. Kim, there's danger up ahead. Yes. I hear commotion. Let's go. I'm ready to do this. Good. Be ready to take damage. Ready to take damage. My goodness. Let's put a little quick save here. Let's uh, look at our, our inventory. We got double guns. <laughs> I'm not sure that's the best way to do it, but we got double guns. Um, let's see. Our hand-eye coordination is doing pretty well. Let's have some uh, reaction speed up, you know? Some quick reactions. Sure, why not? Um, should we even take some a little bit of speed? Get ourselves pumped up for this? I think so. Why not? Our morale goes down, but then we can use some magnesium to get that pumped up. Do we want to pump up our our uh, physique as well? You know what? Maybe we should. Maybe we should. Maybe we're going to get like all sorts of pumped up on drugs. We're a little bit low on cigarettes though, so maybe we won't do that. But let's... Yeah, let's take the St. Baptiste Preptide. That's high class right there. Let's take a swig of this potent Pilsner. We're getting ready for battle <laughs> in the best way we know how. All right, drugs. Come on, let me just click on the drugs. I just wanna, I just wanna use the drugs today. I think they have to go in the left hand. Seems like we only wanna do drugs out of our left hand. Like highlights. There we go. Yeah, baby. We're ready to rock and roll. Who needs morale? Let's take a little swig of our booze. Why can't we use it? It says physique plus one, minus one morale. There we go. Now it's showing up, but I can't click on. 
I'm sorry, guys. I don't know why the game is being such a... It's like, not... It doesn't want us to do these drugs. I do like how it shows the little chemical structure of it. Let's take a little bit of magnesium, heal our morale up. Put our guns back on. Alright, we're locked and loaded. Now we'll get our quick save in, because, you know, we don't have to reload after taking all these drugs. Alright! Danger up ahead. To give cloth, but we're to ready to rock. Reckoning. It's court in the air. Okay. Put your damn gun down. People are gonna get hurt. We need to talk this through. Alright? Shut up. Talk yourself out of this, loincloth shit fuck. This is the mercenary at the gates. His chest rises and falls under the ceramic breastplate. His fingers reach for the butt of his sidearm. The mercenary at the gates. Our good friend, the strike breaker, who told us all those horrific stories. Wait, were those supposed to be stories of Lely? Stories of himself? All I know is they were quite horrific. This man is used to violence. And I wouldn't be surprised if he wants to act some more right here. There's something very wrong with him. Um... I guess we're gonna say this out loud? Yeah, let, let's make ourselves known. He's dangerous. I'm dangerous as well. Shh. This is a misunderstanding. Nothing irreversible has happened yet. You can just return to your unit and forget all about this. The Kipt is merciful, willing to spare us if we just forget about our murdered and humiliated commander. I think we should just kill everyone, Corti. Ooh. She's as violent as Cortinar. Dang, son. All right. Okay, okay, DePaul. You are all drunk. Come to your senses. You won't gun down seven people in the middle of the street. This isn't a frontier town or a jungle outpost. Yeah, because I guess you can do that there if you're just out in the jungle, which is sadly true enough in our world. Very sad. Easy, Lizzy. Let me handle it. I know guys like this. I'm sure we can come to a peaceful agreement. Ain't that right, fellas? He is facing overwhelmingly superior firepower, and he knows it. Peaceful. Oh, who is this dude? Rud Hoenkluin. Nest in your abdominal cavity like a little wild mouse. The masked man's words are barely intelligible, but you can hear them. Whoa, what a freaking creepy dude. Peaceful nesting. Oh my goodness. Fuck, there's a third one. How did we miss something like this? Well, uh, I mean, didn't somebody tell us a third one was coming into town? This third one, he is the most dangerous of them all. Heavily armed. Um, Whisper, let's walk away for now. I don't think we can do that. Um,. Big one is the mercenary at the gates, the lab's scab leader. Yeah, let's ask him. What does he think? What do we do? My plan is not to get killed, but we have to intervene. If this turns into a firefight, we should take him out first. Okay. We're out of time. This is the apocalypse. The mercenary tribunal. Oh, it's Taola, the apocalypse. Stop. This is the police. Look at us rolling in. Get jacket. lost, comedian. You cops had your chance. Now it's fucking time for some justice. Pig fuck! Hmm. What do we say here? Let's go with what electrochemistry would say. I can see you're drunk. Ah, yeah! Welcome to the fucking party. You're probably gonna get killed too. I don't give a shit if you're cops. All right, good to know, Cortner. No one is going to kill anyone. Let's just put the guns down and talk like civilized human beings. With a wordless gurgle, 
The killer loads his long rifle. Dude, this guy's just like a silent masked killer. He is the most dangerous. The leader gives a small nod to the helmeted man. Suddenly, the grip of your sidearm feels comforting and warm in your hand. Feels like it's saying, do it. Yeah. Don't worry, we're gonna get you if you try and mess with us. Shoot him in the mouth. Shoot him before he shoots you. If you waste time, people will die. No, we can do this. Drag it out a bit. Get under his skin. I don't know about this getting under his skin. What if he gets under yours? I'm barely keeping your hand from trembling there. Whatever you do, stop wasting your time thinking about it. Ooh. Interesting. Stand there quietly, hope nothing bad happens. Did we just shoot him? I like I like the way that composure is doing it and suggestions doing it. But we I mean we're horrible at rhetoric and suggestion. We're great at hand eye coordination. Like we took a bunch of drugs, but not the drugs that are gonna improve this. Um I don't know. I don't think these things are gonna work. But I feel like we can't just shoot them. Alright, let's say, where's Klasia? Klasia. Who the fuck is that? Klasia, the woman upstairs. See, where Kim is calls she? her Klasia. She left! Unarmed, hunched, but keeping it together. Oh, Gart. <laughs> yeah, Gart, what the hell are you doing here? What am I doing? My fucking establishment is under fire! You know how much windows cost? Yeah, I apparently had to pay you for breaking mine the other day. What do you mean she left? She left! Her room's cleaned out! Right before these assholes showed up! We should have arrested her. Hey, Bushman! Your little cunt isn't gonna help you out of this one! She's gone. Forget about it now. Concentrate on this. For God's sake, tell him the Hardys didn't do it. Present a case. Dude, we're so horrible at rhetoric. Or suggestion. Dude, why don't we just shoot him? All right, fine. We'll think of an argument. Fine, rhetoric. All right, here we go. This is an illegal tribunal. Greno would never sanction this. Who's the commanding officer? Take your pick. You only have time for one argument. Choose wisely. Hmm, we did have a plus one for Downwell. Um, yeah, I guess that maybe that'll get them. Make them think who's in charge after the death of the colonel. Well, I'm sure there's some sort of command. They, like, who? why would they care about the commanding officer? Colonel does not give you the right to conduct a tribunal. Yeah, we don't want to go into the past, because I think in Downwell, didn't they murder everyone anyway? Now let's talk about Cornell. Cornell does not give you the right to conduct a tribunal. Pops, you have no idea about the rights Cornell extends to us. It's not okay to kill civilians and local law enforcement officers. If I fuck, I'd kill you, hang you to that streetlight by your shit pipes, then that's called a necessary display of force. No one's going to give a shit about dead loincloths. <laughs> That's reality. Okay, it's not much. But he's thinking about something else. And his hand is off the gun. This did something. Now fire. Fuck them up. Alright, physical Good. instrument. The muscles on your back tense up. Easy now. Tell them these men didn't do it. There's a peaceful way out. Oh, we got him talking. We do have a chance to shoot him. Um, yeah, what if he gets under our skin? But rhetoric, rhetoric got us this far. All right, let's tell him. Listen, they didn't do it. Yeah, who did that? Well, we can blame it on Ruby. 
I guess. Even though, you know, she's gone, she's the dead person. We'll pin it on her. It was Ruby. Yeah? The fuck is Ruby? His fingers are twitching. That's a draw reflex. He's about to draw. A suspect. Ruby is a suspect we chased down on the coast. She was hiding. The, yeah, let's talk about La Puta Madre. Maybe, I don't know if these mercenaries know about him, but let's bring this up. You think I'm fucking stupid, cop? What if I just shot one of your pals here, right now? Huh? How about the kit? Go ahead. Tell me about some Puta one more time. Listen, please. This cop and this drumhead cop marshal won't decide who... He's gonna do it. He's gonna shoot her. Um, I guess, maybe? We can have logic come Your in? Your mind grinds to a halt. All you can see is the revolver in the man's armored hand, swaying, pointed at her. You move your mouth like a fish gasping for air. Oh, she's gonna shoot her? Alright, I guess the gunfight's gonna start. He pulls on the trigger. A plume of smoke erupts from the muzzle. The shot rings in your ears. A low, tinny ring. Then the Hardy Boys yell something. Rhetoric, what did you do? I'm okay. I'm okay. She doesn't look like she's, she's okay. Not. She's bleeding out. If she doesn't get help in ten minutes, she'll die. Fuck this! Jean! Cancel Lizzie! Now! He'll be ripped apart. They all will. The moment the third man opens fire, and he knows it. Oh man. <laughs> It's getting it's getting worse now. We got the gardener shot. Man, let's let suggestion have a quick talk and then we're shooting him. That's for damn sure. All right. Suggestion you got something of for course. me? Of course. Nothing bad will happen. Talk about his dead friend. He seems stable. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Him. Am I sure he's already shot one person? Even better. It will further destabilize him, costing time and maybe even lives. Great. Thanks, Suggestion. You're a real pal. I feel like I got to know your dead friend during our investigation. Don't fucking talk to me about my brother, Lloyd Clark. Okay, yes. Immediate failure. Things are worse now. He's observing your every motion carefully. <laughs> Things are worse now, but actually it's gotten better. We discussed his dead friend. He was a plus one. Uh, hopefully that's actually true. The game isn't just lying to me. Um, but yeah, let's shoot him now. Boom! What you know about a that? Of smoke and fire erupts <laughs> from the gun, and your hand goes numb from the explosion. Uh, let's look at everything. We don't want to just look at Courtney. The smoke drifts west with the wind. You hear the plaza erupt in violence, slow, like a waterfall in reverse. Okay, I guess we look at Courtenaire now. There is a hole in his cheek. Blood gushes out as he stumbles backward, eyes filled with rage and disbelief, gurgling, muttering something unintelligible. There we go, baby. There we go. We took him out. Oh, look at that roll. A nice old seven. A nice old seven. That was pretty good. Pretty good, but we still got two... Bogey standing up. His lips, moving, swollen with fear, are trying to say, shoot him, shoot him, but he can't. Oh, this guy's gonna to shoot me. Right, the killer raises his rifle and takes aim at you. His moves are steady, but the long barrel of the rifle sways slowly. We, we don't need to worry about Kim. We need to think and then dodge, probably. So it's moving slowly. You stare down the barrel of the gun. You see Rude's mask behind it. His eyes in the slit of the helmet, like a camera lens, focusing on you. 0.6 seconds remain. There are six little black dots in the tip of the thick barrel, like a honeycomb. This is a knock cannon. It shoots six rounds in one pull of the trigger. Is there anything, anything, we could use to protect this frail body? That gun will tear us to pieces. Do we have our armor on. A full suit of armor can't be too agile. You can shift direction faster than he can. 
Ah, thank you, Savvy. Way to go there, buddy. We're only wearing a partial suit of armor. <laughs> There's no way. You're just gonna die. Just close your eyes when it happens. Oh, thanks, frickin' half light. I love how we got plus one and then minus one. All right, let's do it. Let's dodge the shot. A low shot rings. Ooh. You feel a tapping like rain on your chest plate. Heavy drops of rain. Then the sound of dice rolling as the cuirass distributes the shot evenly from plate to plate. There we go. I knew wearing this armor was a good idea. You got hit. The armor took most of it, but still your ribcage burns. Feels like blood is slowly seeping into your lungs. God, please. The lieutenant says quietly, without trembling, he aims, face pale. Oh, but she's drawing down on him. Two shots ring at once. One from the lieutenant's pistol, Whoa. and the other from the balls. It's aimed at the lieutenant, but it misses. You hear a scream behind you. Dang, look at Kim! Kim, you beautiful bastard. That was an amazing shot. Did he hit the rifle? Blood in? gushes from the helmet's eye sockets as Rude staggers back, disoriented. The sounds coming from his helmet are not human. An unbelievable shot from the lieutenant. That was amazing, Kim. You may have missed that frickin' belt. Hey holding up Lely, but you got Rude right in the frickin' eyes. Who screamed? Glenn, dying in a puddle of blood behind you. His mangled torso has two gunshot wounds. Blood gushes out of them like red geezers. I mean, geysers, but yes. Poor Glenn. I don't remember much about you, Glenn. You probably weren't one of the nice hardy boys, if I don't remember much about you. But you probably weren't the biggest asshole either. You see two crazed eyes stare at you through all the smoke and the panic. With blood gushing from his face, the man raises his pistol at you. Then he squeezes the trigger. Freaking court now. I bet you're going to try and hit me, but you ain't going to hit me. You ain't going to hit me. I'm going to look him in the eye. The look of vengeance framed in blood, lips shaking. This is the last thing he'll do on earth. But he will do it. He is your end. All right. Try and get me, Court Here now. Here it comes. Death. All right, let's see if we can dodge it. Nope. Ouch. You can't. There is no time. Something inside your pelvis explodes. Your entire lower body is on fire, and your legs can't support you. You fall down like a rag doll. Damn, son. That freaking sucks. Uh, let's... Let's try to open our eyes. What do I see? Nothing. A persisting darkness. Dancing lights of pain. Distant shadows cast by them. Like a hellish play. Things aren't looking good. You're bleeding out. No one wants to do anything with me. No one wants to party with me. The wolf is at the door, Kim. He will eat the sun. I made it up. I remember everything. Oh, there's a white shadow that smells like apricots. It's always there. These are, these are the two, I think we would say. The apocalypse. He will eat the sun, Kim. He will eat the sun. Yes, keep talking. Still, <laughs> look at me. Kim's loving it. But you can't. It's so hard. Your eyelids grow heavy, and the sounds ever more distant, and a cold comes over you. The lieutenant, too, is somewhere far away, almost gone, when suddenly you sense something behind him, a slender white shadow towering. Someone stands there, raising her pistol at him. The lieutenant does not see it. He's pushing down on your wound, with both hands. Frickin' DePaul here. Scream immediately. He's gonna die. No, Kim! Oh, look at all this trust Kim has for us. The lieutenant trusts you. Kim truly trusts you. No, Kim! No, you say. 
and hand out your firearm to him. Your hand trembles and your eyes are full of fear. No, my eyes can't be full of fear. They gotta be full of determination. That's all it takes. There is no room for hesitation. The lieutenant moves like a spring unloaded. He grabs the gun from your bloody hand and fires behind him. Damn, Kim. Dude, maybe Kim was like, maybe he was sandbagging on that shot. He like pretended not to hit the thing, but he's actually a superior marksman. You hear a faint scream, a woman's. Then the sound disappears, like someone pressed stop on the tape. The woman is gone. So is Kim. Then the whole world. Time to fade into darkness. This is death. One more door, baby. One more door. No. Let me back into the fight. The fight? There is no fight. The fight is over. It was lost a thousand years ago. You have laid here forever. Keep falling deeper. Take the door. Man, is this how it ends for us? Just got taken out right here. I mean, this is admittedly a better death than the one where we put the gun in our mouth to impress Titus and pull the trigger. This is definitely a lot better. He's not taking it. His body is not taking it. Oh, God, no. He's not disintegrating. He's swelling up instead. Of the hours. Hurting. Moaning in his sleep. That's right, baby. Hurting and moaning. That's how you get better. Back to grabbing and shooting and killing and saving the town. And rotting and being disinfected and smelling of drugs and feeling saliva in his mouth. Drifting in painkillers. Thrashing in his own sleep. He can't go. Not before the case is solved. Oh, okay. Volition wants to keep me here to solve the case. There was a radio in the distance. A radio of the world. Plain sounds. Good morning, Elysium. Soon you will return to the world. Good morning, Elysium. Disco Elysium, the club we founded. We can't go before we make Van Eyck's jam even harder core. Egghead is rooting for us. You're thirsty. Reach for the glass of water by the bed. The world is still there. Sleep somewhere. Hours turn to days. Soon we will get up again and go through it again, again. Finally, we know what the infernal engine was outside. The clarion core. It was him. He is the infernal engine. He never stops. He only gets worse. Hmm. I'm like reading this in two different ways. He's either talking about us, Harry, Harry, Harry Dubois, or Kim Kitsuragi. Because like both of us, we get up and we never stop. Although he's probably talking about us because he's saying we only get worse. So it looks like uh, our wound was not fatal. Good thing we wore that chest plate. We have that... You know, the other shot hit us in the pelvis. Which you see the lieutenant's familiar fun. shape in the orange jacket. Well, we're sitting it turns up. double, then triple from the pain. We're sitting up. It's day seven. It's only been a couple days. It's nothing. You're alive. That's what matters. Yeah, but let's talk out to Kim. Kim. Sunrise, a rebellion. A new skill point. Sunrise Parabellum, that's what's written on our gun, right? What did you say? Sunrise? Sunrise Parabellum. Sunrise, prepare for war. It's an old revolutionary thing. Uh, Isn't that written on your... My gun. It's engraved on it. It served you well. It did. I shot Court. I got one of them. Kim got two. I got one. 
You know, if we're freaking Gimli and Legolas, you've won, Kim. Did well. Is it war today? The gates of the harbor are boarded up. The streets are a little more empty. Apocalyptic violence is yet to erupt. I am relieved to say. <laughs> I wonder if he's saying that because he knows we're an apocalypse cop. I think we may have held it off for now. Barely. Good. I may be the herald of the apocalypse, but that doesn't mean I want it to come. I just want you to know that it's coming. Yes, we have also completely failed, but that's okay. I mean, did we fail? How bad am I hurt? Reasonably bad. You were shot in the left quadriceps. That's your tie. It appears no major arteries were nicked. The bullet was removed and a bacterial infection treated with mercurochrome. Oh. Did we pass out from just getting shot in the thigh? I mean, that does sound pretty painful. Who, who am I to talk? I would probably pass out from anything, like stubbing my toe, stepping on a Lego. The bruising in your shoulder is negligible. The armor took the brunt of the fire. Negligible. Can I walk? We will see. With considerable pain and the stitches tearing every now and then, you should be able to do it. Has... Ooh, this is a question. Uh, has anyone from my station been to see me? No. Uh, oh, man. A man and a woman sit in the front seat of an armored motor carriage. The woman is driving. The man lights a cigarette. Jean Vicmer is his name. The asphalt vanishes under the wheels of the machine. Ahead, harbor cranes rise to the sky. Back to that shithole, he says. I mean, both these are pretty messed up. We'll just go, really. I called your station after the fight. The injury was logged in. They told me they've sent officers to join you on the site. Hmm. Odd. You haven't seen any, have you? I'm sure they're worried about you. Okay. Well, that's a bummer. If not my station, then who treated me? I did. Thank you, Kim. No need. Fair enough, brother. Are you hurt? Not very. I have a concussion from that woman beating me with the butt of her gun. I try to not move too much. Things would be worse if you didn't warn me. Thank you. I did not see her coming. Stupid of me. It's okay, Kim. It was the heat of the battle. All right. Let's get up. Ooh. Wow. Easy now. Lieutenant turns double again before your eyes, an orange hue of pain. You can take it. Just don't lean on that leg of yours too heavily. Yeah, pain threshold's got my back. Your balance is way off. You feel like you're about to fall over on that thing. Yo, yo, we'll just take a couple drugs, we'll be fine. How are you? I feel fantastic, let's rock. No, 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 no. No, no. He nubs. All right. Let's uh, let's just talk. What happened? What happened? You shot the major in the face. A firefight ensued. Is he dead? Yes. Good. You're a real killer, Harry. Yeah, I am. I am a killer. You're an officer of the RCM. As retaliation, the rifleman tried shooting you. He hit the cuirass. I heard it go off. I was looking for a clear line of sight to him. He sounds a tiny bit sorry he did not find it before you got hit. It's okay. That's why I wear this armor, baby. I shot and wounded him, while Glenn took a bullet in the spine. It was meant for me. He did not survive. Titus, Fat Angus, and Theo charged. Angus and Theo did not make it. They both died before they made it to intensive care. Titus survives. So do Alain and the musician. I forget his name. Dang, Fat Angus didn't make it, and neither did Theo, huh? Eugene. Yes, he's still alive too. You were bleeding out. You said something, I don't know what. And you warned me. I was able to disarm Officer De Paul before she got the jump on me. Thank you. Ah, uh, no worries, Kim. Dude, I got your back. I killed her. And that's what happened. Whoa, he disarmed her and killed her. Nice. So you also killed brother? He nods. 
This is an interesting thing to say, but I'm going to say it. I thought you only smoked one a day. This is the one. This is the one. <laughs> He's getting it early today, and they're all dead, all three of the contractors. The pool was the last today. Everhart had their bodies returned to Connell for a funeral. The company is yet to retaliate. Why is that? Because we deterred them, or Joyce did. Maybe the harbor in full lockdown is too costly a target. Or maybe... Maybe they know not to fuck with us, because we just x three of their dudes. Maybe they are simply taking their time and will attack soon. I don't know. Oh, that's, that's a little bit less exciting. How many casualties on the Union side total? So what, three of them, right? Glenn, Fat Angus, and Theo? Five. Glenn, Theo, Shanky, and Angus. The fat one. He took a lot of bullets. Oh, five. Shanky, I don't And remember. Elizabeth, too. Elizabeth Beaufort was her name. The gardener. Damn, that's sad. She didn't make it. No, she bled out before Everhart's surgeon could help her. Everhart sent his personal doctor, but... A costly loss for the Union. She was being trained for leadership. Yeah... I did all I could there. I know you did. It's all right. That's right. That's right. All right. All. That's all. It's not an absolute disaster. It is a total shit show. I don't know if it's not that bad. I mean, I also agree. I don't see how it could have gone any better. But yeah, it's a total shit show, Kim. Yes, officer. Six people are dead. It's not a success. I guess maybe they... I guess maybe they only recorded six, but he did say seven people are dead. Plus one. Ruby. Oof. But what's done is done. The violence is cold enough. The Hornets did not get into the beehive. The worst scenario has not materialized. Yet. That's true. Weren't we thinking like thousands of people could have died? And we are still alive. Both of us. Yeah, that's right, Kim. My man. He's smoking. He's hunched back. You have it worse. But he took a real beating. That cigarette has medicinal purposes. All right, now we can say ouch. It's not ouch time yet. You just go to the Duramin pill an hour ago. Wait until it wears off. No, oh, I'll take some more drugs if I want to. Duramin. Then it's not that bad. Neither surgical nor organ damage bad. But still... Under the counter, bad. The room is clean? Mr. Gart cleaned it. It took him an entire day. <laughs> an entire day. How long have I been out? Two days. In and out. You've been up enough to take Dwarmin and curse. And drink water. Alright, what do we do now, Kim? I honestly don't know. <laughs> Good, because I totally do. Do you? Because we can't talk to Everhart. The harbor is in lockdown. Everyone in there is outside our grasp now. And Joyce has left too. Oh man, she was supposed to give me the reality lowdown. That's why I did the jamais vu. Yes, she left yesterday morning. To meet the board of Wild Pines. Oh, that is what I've heard. There's a pin somewhere in the machine that keeps Connell from sending in a death squad. Maybe it's her. Maybe she kept her hand. Either way, Ruby's gone. And Classio too. We really should have arrested her, you know? I didn't even know that was an option. Who did it then, Kim? Who killed the hanged man? I don't know. I think the dangerous theory you presented on Classio was wrong. We have not found a motive or a weapon for her. Honestly, I think our investigation has not produced a single credible suspect. Wow, this is a lot of options. My goodness. My goodness. The Kim the Flowers! What? This one, remember? Every piece of garbage in the city is not connected to the case. You don't have to keep everything. I will. I will keep everything. What about the hole in the wall? Someone was checking her out. I don't know. That's been there for years. Let's not talk about this one. He already said we're not a peone. And the footprints? Yes. God cursed the footprints. Not solving the case for us. Au diable. Still 28% possibility the shot came from a distance. We should go upstairs, rethink the ballistics in situ. I agree with this. What else? Antique bullet from a Belmar grave? How hard can it be to find one? It's extremely easy. There are thousands lying around. We found one. All completely unusable. 
it's precisely how easy it is to find one that makes the bullet useless. Mm. Bunkers and weapon caches? We could find thousands more if we wanted. All of Ravachol is full of them. Communism killed him. Uh, the miracle hasn't happened he yet? He does not know what to reply. Looks out of the window, then back at you. Okay, fine, Kim. It's morning outside. You think? You know what I think about solving crimes? He arches his brow. The ceiling fan patiently spins overhead. Solving crimes is super easy. Is almost impossible. Uh, let's let's just say it's hard. Solving crimes is hard. It really is very hard. That concussion must be making him dizzy. That's right. Let's give up. Time to start drinking. <laughs> I don't think so. Are you ready to limp? All right, I'm ready. Good. Where do you want to limp to? A gust of wind blows in from the bay. The duraluminium box around you vibrates imperceptibly. A familiar cold, a red thread on the roof upstairs. Taut, plucked like a string by the gust. I suppose we shall check Clausier's room upstairs. Why not? Why not, indeed. Another look at the window, perhaps? The one he was shot through. I don't know. I can't think of anything better. All right, so that'll do it for us. I don't know if we're going to be sprinting around anytime soon, having our pelvis just get shattered. At least our clothing still looks nice. We don't have blood everywhere. We're looking pretty okay. But yeah, that's the confrontation. Confrontation with the Cronell mercenary squad. Unfortunately, there was a lot of people who died from Titus's group. Perhaps if we had dodged the shot, the shot from... The colonel, maybe we could have made it. It was impossible. I don't I don't see how you could do it. You'd have to have extremely high what was it, reaction speed? Maybe you could do it. Maybe it's possible. Maybe if we had dodged that shot, we would we would have been able to take out more of the mercenaries. But as it is, here we are. At least me and Kim are still alive. And while we're still here, we're gonna freaking discover who the murderer is. We're going to solve this case for Ruby, for Clausia, for Lely, for everyone who died. So, until next time, do remember to take care of yourself and keep it disco, baby.